Hello and welcome to Organic Edible Garden. Today we're going to look at planting our cucurbits, like a pumpkin squash or zucchinis and cucumbers. All cucurbits like really warm conditions, so now that it's early summer, it's time to get them in. Cucurbits also like to be planted in the soil that's enriched with compost and animal manures, which is a good nitrogen source. I've already planted my pumpkins, or in these cases, they're squash. And if you're confused about the difference, usually squash is a botanical term and pumpkin is a culinary term. So if you see a recipe that's asked for squash or pumpkin, either can be used. In this bed, I planted kabocha, which are a type of Japanese buttercup. I really like them because they've got a dry, bright orange flesh. They don't have a long keeping quality, so in the next bed, I've gone and planted butternuts. These guys will last all year and are great for winter soups and stews. I've planted these pumpkin about half a metre apart. They're going to do a lot of trailing, so I don't mind that they cover this area. And I've put a stick next to them. I've done this because when they trail, I won't know where to water. So when I am watering them, I can water where the stick is and it'll go straight to the roots. This is going to be my zucchini bed. It's now been dug over and enriched with some good compost. And in a bed this size, I only want to plant about four zucchini. They grow quite large and they need about a metre space between them. I've chosen the space to plant my cucurbits because it gets a lot of sunshine, but it also gets a good breeze coming through it. And air movement is so important for cucurbits to help ward off disease. There's a huge variety of zucchini you can plant. Some of them are dark green, going on to striped and even to yellow. And today I'm also going to plant some scallopini, which are also a type of zucchini, but they grow round rather than long. Also, there's different types that you can buy which have female flowers and male flowers, or some are just Parthia carpic and only have the female flowers. If you're planning to stuff the flowers of these zucchinis, a variety like Cocozelle, which is open pollinated, is usually the best. Or any of the Italian varieties that have a large bloom. I'm just going to plant some dark green ones now and when I put them in the hole I'm going to dig the soil out, put some chicken manure or any animal manure in, put some soil back in and plant on top of that and then I'll spread some more animal fertiliser around them. The more food you can give them the better. The dark green zucchini I'm planting is called Parthenon and I'm planting this is because it's pathiocarpic. If we have issues with bees because of wind or climatic conditions I'll still get zucchinis on these plants. Later on when the weather gets more stable, I'm going to plant the open pollinated varieties, which I actually prefer. I'm going to do this because the weather's more stable, the bees will be flying and they'll be easily pollinated. When you're planting in your home garden, or you've got a smaller raised bed, it's often good to put the zucchini on the very corner. This way, it can trail over the edge of the bed and get more air movement. And as a general rule, one zucchini for a family of four is usually enough. If you put in one now, and maybe one in six weeks later, you'll have zucchinis throughout the whole season. The next thing I'll do is put on the rock dust. There isn't a plant I grow that I wouldn't put this on. This helps keep the plants at their optimal level and makes them nutrient dense. And finally, I'm gonna put a covering of chicken manure on. Not only does this help feed the plant, but it helps keep the moisture in the soil and feeds the worms. And in the last bed, we're going to add our cucumbers. Although they like the same growing conditions as the pumpkins and the zucchinis, they're a little bit more fussy about the water. What we want to do is we're going to plant about five in a bed this size, we're going to mulch them heavily. And this is because when cucumbers are stressed with lack of water or lack of nutrients, they can sometimes go bitter. If your plants do get stressed over the summer period and you feel they are getting a little bit bitter, 
Most of the bitterness is contained in the first two inches after the stalk. So if you chop that piece off, the rest of the cucumber should still be okay. We're gonna plant three types of cucumbers today. The old fashioned apple, the telegraph, and the Lebanese. I grow the apple because I love the taste. And although you have to peel the skin, they're a good, reliable cropper. The telegraph grow nice and long, and although they don't grow straight unless you put them up a trellis, they're a really good standby. But out of all of them, my favorite and the easiest to grow is the Lebanese. The trick with these guys is you need to pick them almost every day. If you let the cucumbers get too big on a Lebanese, the plant thinks it's time to reproduce, as in set seed, so it won't produce new baby cucumbers. I'm going to put a handful of rock dust around each of the plants. And as for the zucchinis, I'm going to put the chicken manure around as a mulch and to feed the plants. All I need to do now is put the sticks in and give it a good water to bed them in. I probably won't put sticks next to the zucchinis because they grow into bushes. Whereas the cucumbers, like the pumpkins, they trail. If you feed your mortar your cucurbits, they're fairly easy to grow. But if you live in a humid climate, one of the problems you can have with them is powdery mildew. As a preventative but not a cure, some of the good ways to do this are baking soda and water, or even well diluted milk and water and just put them in a watering can and sprinkle it over the plants. Also you can use a good seaweed solution and feed them with that and that will help alkalize the leaves and keep that powdery mildew at bay. If you do see a yellow and black ladybird on your plant those are not good. You want to get rid of those and dispose of them because what they're doing is going from one plant and transferring that powdery mildew to the next plant. 